Uh, Liam, uh, not too much reflection, I think, on on midweek. Let's talk about the transfer window. That's what everyone's talking about at the moment. And before we talk about a couple of outs, let's talk about Theo, uh, who's joined the club. Um, you know, a, a, you know a, a, an interesting signing, a signing that certainly put a few smiles on MK Don's faces. Yeah, definitely. I'm, you know, obviously delighted to have him join us for the remainder of the season. I think, uh, you know, he's one that we, you know, that w when it came about, we obviously remembered him from when we played up there. You know, I thought he, he thought he caused us some problems that evening, um, and then we did a lot of work as well. You know, between now and then. So, you know, when it was a, when it was raised, it might be a possibility. It was something that you know myself and Liam and, and the staff were quite keen on. So, delighted to have him on board. You know, I think he, he brings a different dimension to our attack. Um, you know, he's someone that can carry the ball. He can go past people. Uh, two-footed as well so again I think it you know it's also a sign of where we're at you know that we can attract players like that that you know are, are keen to join here and you know feel that it's a, a good progression for them um, you know and that that, that for me is a you know a compliment a compliment sorry to the you know to the staff to the players to the team and to the club um, that you know like I said that we can attract players like that. I actually, I actually think Neem, you're right I think it's a big moment for MK Dons to have a player leaving a club like Sheffield Wednesday on loan and coming to MK Dons. Is, is the reason from Wolves' perspective that the football that you play suits the way that they want him to develop? Yeah, I think so. I think, again, you'd have to, to, to get the exact reasons and the fine details would obviously be a discussion with Wolves. But, you know, I think what what we've, you know, put forward and, you know, I think more importantly, how the guys have been performing so far this season to this date, you know, that it, it makes it attractive, I think, for... You know, for Premier League clubs especially to send players to us given you know they know how we'll treat them as people first and foremost which I think is really important they know we're going to look after them properly and take good care of them but then also you know from the playing perspective so again I think huge credit has to go to you know to the players as well as the staff um, and just on the on the ins presumably you know that's not the end of it there's there's work going on behind the scenes it won't just be work that started now. It's been going on for months, no doubt. Is a a anything else on the horizon coming in? Uh, the, the immediate, the immediate future is in the next day or two. At the minute, probably no, but we, we are looking to, you know, add to it. I think um, it's always the, you know, the the beauty and the excitement of it. It can happen so quick. I think that's the thing. You, you know, you feel like, you know, a deal or somebody's a little way off, and then all of a sudden, within, you know, forty eight hours, they could be in through the door. It can happen that quick. So. Again, I think it's, it's staying fairly level, not uh, not getting, again, even, even with the transfers, you can get too emotional around it. And I think, you know, what, what we have to do here is concentrate on the group of players that we have got, make sure that, you know, we do everything to make sure we, you know, the culture stays the same, that we keep, you know, pushing hard to perform and winning games. And then, you know, the, the work, you know, that Liam Sweeney obviously does a huge amount of work in the background to, you know, to make sure that, you know, we're communicating, that we know what's out there and that, you know, at the right time with the right player that we're ready to move. And, and and I suppose just finally on 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 that, um, the the beauty is that the way MK Don's play, you you must be delighted that that players come and can develop because that's loan players certainly, but even players who are maybe wanting to progress in their career, um, the proof is in the pudding, and the pudding says that MK Don's players that are signed come develop, and you know, eight times out of ten move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh... I think there's a fine balance to it. I think what's really important that, you know, what we don't want to be is a stepping stone quickly for people. I think that, that that's really important to stress. I think we want we want people that, that want to come here, that want to develop, that want to progress. But at the same point, we want them to buy into the team and, you know, being a success here. So, you know, ultimately for us, finishing as high as we can this year. I think that's the, we don't want it to be a quick, you know, stepping stone for people. I think, you know, we want to create a culture where, you know, inevitably people, you know, arguably should uh, hold ambitions to play at a higher level. I think that that that's inevitable, and I think you, for me, I want that in players. I want people that have drive, that have hunger, that have ambition. But for me, there's no reason why you know they, 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 that can't be done over a period of time here by the team here being successful. And I think that's you know that's an important one to stress because again, I think like I said, culturally, you know, it is a it is a good place. I think players do need levels of consolidation, which I think you know you see it quite often. Players can jump too soon and it not work out. So I think you know it's a case of making sure that. We have to have that culture where, you know, our team is first. That's number one. No one, no one's individual objectives will be ahead of that. Our culture and our team, what we're trying to do here, has to has to be number one. And if if along on that journey that you know we we can work hard to you know get some success with the team, you know people move on at the right time and you know it fits right for the club, that then you know so be it. But yeah, I think it's important to stress that of course we have 
young players that rightly so are ambitious and hungry. But you know, whilst they're here, and I have to say the group are terrific at that. Everything goes into you know this football club and making sure that we do everything on a Saturday or Tuesday to try and win matches. And we say farewell to uh, to Charlie Brown and, and Laurie Walker, both going on to hopefully. Uh, you know, play some football and 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 develop themselves. But uh, I would imagine they go with your best wishes. Yeah, definitely. I think you know, two two really good characters. I have to say, me me and Charlie go back a long way, and um, yeah, I have a huge amount of respect for him. And you know, I genuinely hope that that he goes on to do well, uh, albeit not against us when we play them in the in the return leg. Uh, but he's he's a great character. It's not quite worked out, obviously here. Um, but you know, he, he definitely goes with our with our best wishes and you know our our hopes that he goes on and has a you know a a long successful career and the same for Laurie. Laurie is obviously a local lad that I can't speak highly enough in terms of what he's brought to the culture here in our short time. Um, you know, he's terrific around the place. He's, you know, trains well every day. Um, but, you know, when, when an opportunity comes for someone that, you know, can arguably go and compete to be number one. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, you know, it's a it's an easy one to keep him around it for us and, and be quite selfish. But actually, I think, you know, for, for his career where he's at, coming into the game so late with the opportunity to go and potentially play in League Two's, um, one when I sat with him that we all kind of agreed was a terrific opportunity for him. So, again, he he goes with our best wishes and is another one that we you know we hope to do well. And the games continue to come thick and fast. Saturday you're up uh, in Accrington, uh, recently not happy hunting ground for for MK Dons in the last few seasons, but an opportunity to 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 uh, to stay with the clubs in and around the playoffs. Yeah, look, I, I think again he. It's a really, really difficult place to go, uh, and, and you know I think I said it before when we played Aki at home. It's you know what, remarkable what uh, what what you know John Coleman's done there in terms of you know the the level they're at, the level of player, the culture they have. Um, you know we, it's going to be a really difficult game. You only have to look at their their home form. You know recently in picking up results against you know Rotherham at home, Ipswich, Bolton, some of the teams that they've beaten. You know I think it, uh, we know it's going to be an extremely difficult game, but. I think it's one that, that myself and the guys, you know, we relish. I think we have to. I think you have to really look forward to going there. And, and first and foremost, matching them in terms of intensity, work rate, desire to compete, and then, you know, then trying to get, get hold of the ball. I think that'll be the biggest challenge for us tomorrow. Can we can we show a level of composure when we do regain it to, you know, to, to try and play how we want to? But, uh, you know, I think we're all really clear as a group here. It's going to be another really, really difficult game. And just finally from me, um, I, I'd imagine over the, over the coming weeks with... One or two of the fixtures still to be rearranged, um, and certainly it's been a very busy period. Um, it's about managing, um, managing the players. Uh, you know, the, the the fitness, the making sure that certain players get rested, and it, using the squad. I guess you've got to do over the next few weeks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, really important that people are ready to step in when when required. Um, you know, mentally, physically, is you know, it's a tough year. It's a tough season. I think it. Especially you now, when you when you look at it now, the weather, the darkness, the pitches, you know, the all the noise around the transfer window. There's so many things that can potentially distract you from what's the most important thing, and that's making sure that we turn up, you know, tomorrow ready to have a you know a, a right go at trying to win the game. And I think that's the that's the bit. And you know, off the back of that, then it's on you know me and the staff to make sure that we we run a program where the guys get the right balance of rest, the right balance of feedback, the right balance of training, the right balance of preparation. So, you know, we're, we're constantly, you know, having discussions and, and being slightly flexible and adaptable depending on what the group looks like they need. Cheers, Liam. Thanks, mate. No problem. As we head into the second half of the season, um, you must be looking forward to seeing how far your sides come because Accrington was certainly one of the, the, the early games in your time at, at Stadium NK and, you know, you're taking them on tomorrow, it's an opportunity to see just how far your side has developed since you took over. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we might not have got the, right, the result we wanted probably, you know, in the last, you know, the game midweek against Charlton and last week, uh, you know, on the first, it feels forever ago now against Gillingham. But I have to say, you know, and obviously I I get to see what we work on with the guys every day and, you know, some of the messages that we've been working really hard at for a period of time and, you know, some some of the things I, I saw come out in the game which were quite pleasing, you know, to see that, you know, the progress and I thought, you know, there was real good connection. You know, the build up was, was of a good level, you know, the connection between the bottom and the top of the box was good. So there were there were some real things, you know, that I was actually really pleased with. And again, I think you there's also the context, you know, Aki at home to Aki away, playing, you know, when the weather's good to the weather's poor, there's there's so many different challenges. Um so of course we want to see certain, you know, levels of progress, but it's also you know what gets you through is is that that discipline, that intensity, that focus that the guys need to you know deliver over, 
you know, a long, a long season, and that, that's that's our starting point, you know, tomorrow and every game. Yeah, I suppose the conditions are going to be significantly different. You know, what with the the snow and everything, and I suppose it's quite nice not to be worrying about a COVID postponement, but instead potentially the weather. Yeah, no, I think um, I just, I've not looked that far ahead to be totally honest. I probably should, but. For me, it's, you know, we've just come off the training pitch. We're ready to jump on the coach and do what we can. The rest, the weather's out of our control, so it's around, you know, again, not, not allowing another distraction to take our eye off what we need to do. Speaking of those distractions, though, with um, rumours flying around with, with members of your squad, obviously, during this window, um, what do you say to, if, if you hear any of the rumours, if you pick up on them? Do you, do you talk to the players about it, or is it just something that you deal with when, if and when bids come in and, and, and interest starts to become a little bit more formal I suppose yeah I think you know we, we, we had a discussion with the whole group so I, I think that was you know for, for me it's really important to be open and transparent so you know we had a discussion with a group I think you know and I think that that is a lot of it there is a lot of noise out there um you know for me how we operate I think is really important as well you know I show the guys a lot of respect as I would you know other clubs so for me it's you know it's not our place to go and talk around other people's players etc so for me it's concentrating what we can which is you know deal with the noise speak with the players keep your head down keep your you know, keep your eye on delivering. You know, the noises come about because you performed well. So, keep focusing on that, making sure you, you know, you you deliver what you can, and that's you know, high level performances week in week out. And then it's a case of you know, if if situations change, if you know things happen which you know haven't so far, then you know we we will pull the guys in and we'll talk to them you know at the appropriate time. But for me, it's it's like I said, it's speaking with the lads, being completely open and honest, and keeping their heads down and working until you know until things change. I suppose it's something that every manager wants to, to to pick up during a transfer window is a 20 goal a season striker. Um, you've now lost two strikers during this window. Is is that area of the pitch something you're going to be looking at this month? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like, we, like we've said, I think, you know, this. if you're dependent on one person to score your 20 goals, I'm not sure you'll, you know, you'll you'll finish the season as you want. And that's when, you know, if you look at it, you know, with the likes of Twiney, with Mo, with Troy, with Matt O'Reilly, with Peter Chioso, you know, with Theo coming in, you know, I think you look at it and I think that's the, I'd, I prefer that where there's a real spread of goals so that if someone does have a dip, we've got other people that can step up and deliver and, you know, of course we'll be looking to, you know, to add in, in certain areas. Um, but at the same point, like I say, I think we've, we've, got, we've still got a lot of goals in the team um, and, it, you know, for me it's just continuing to challenge them to, you know, to maintain their levels and increase their levels of, you know, taking chances which you know I think back to the Gilliam game we had actually a couple of good chances that I'd expect us to take and that, that that's the bit with the guys we do extra finishing we watch the videos back we you know continually stretch them to go right you know get your numbers even higher score even more goals so like I said it's, it's concentrating the guys we've got but also going you know is, is the right one out there to add to uh, you know to that line that must be quite a nice position to be in then not knowing that you've not got to just concentrate on one area but knowing that because you've got those goals, you know, you can afford to go out and find somebody who's got that little bit of an X factor with. Yeah, I think it's I think it's important. I think it's important to find the right character, but I also think it's important to find someone that complements the guys we've got. I think that's the, you know, that's why, you know, if, I think Theo does bring a slightly different dimension to our attack. So again, I think it's, you know, and, and like I said before, Liam and, you know, uh, is, is doing a huge amount of work on, on you know, the, the, the right types for us. So again, I think, you know, as, as you find with a window, there's there's so much noise and so much ifs, buts and maybes. It's, you know, sometimes you wait for something to happen before it has a knock-on effect and, you know, other deals, you know, uh, fall into place. So it's, we, we, we've got our targets. We know who we're looking at. It's then just a case of being patient and, and making sure that, uh, you know, when, it, when it's possible to happen, that we're ready to move.